Hello. Today I will be reading Teammates, written by Tiki and Rondé Barber. So you might remember Game Day, which we read earlier, also by Tiki and Rondé Barber. So just to remind you, Tiki and Rondé Barber were professional athletes in the NFL, and this is another story based on their childhood when they played football together on the same team. So here we go. Tiki and Rondé Barber, Teammates. Here's a picture of the real life. Tiki and Rondé as adults. Teammates. <clears throat> First, there was daylight. Then there wasn't. The hole in the line opened and closed that quickly. Smack! Tiki saw the football fly into the air. At the same moment, he felt his feet go up from under him. Fumble! Get it! Tiki lay on his side, helplessly watching the squirming mass of arms and legs five yards away. The referee was poking under and peeling off the bodies. Rondé was the next to last player at the bottom of the pile. Maybe, but no. The Vikings had lost the ball on a fumble for the third time. Yes, it was only a preseason practice game. Still, it was against the Vikings' arch rivals, the Knights. Tiki, head bent, shuffled off the field, wishing he could just plain disappear. He stared down at his two hands. What gives? I've always carried the ball this way before. After the game, the twins were waiting for their mother to pick them up. Along with Coach Mike, they walked toward the practice field gate. They sat on a bench by the fence. Rondé tried to cheer his brother up. It's okay, Tiki. Mistakes happen. Coach Mike interrupted. Mistakes do happen, but you can make them happen less often if you... The coach paused, searching for the right words. Practice! Tiki jumped in. The coach smiled. Have you heard the old saying, practice makes perfect? The twin smiled back and nodded. Who hadn't heard that one? Well, it's not exactly true. Was this some kind of joke? If you're not practicing the right way, you're just practicing your bad habits. Huh? Coach Mike held the football in front of him with one hand. If you practice carrying a football like this, you'll never really get good because it is the wrong way to carry the ball. Then Coach Mike went on. See? Four contact points. One, your fingers around the tip. Two, the other tip in your armpit. Three, one side of the ball against your forearm. Four, the other side against your chest. Try knocking it out, he said. Tiki and Rodney took turns trying, but no luck. One, two, three, four contact points, the coach repeated. You do it. He handed the football to Tiki. So if you look in the picture, you can see how the coach is holding the football and showing them to hold it just like that so that way it can't get knocked loose. A car horn sounded. The twins waved and scrambled toward their mother's car, with Tiki carrying the football firmly tucked in his arm. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mrs. Barber. We were just talking about the right way to carry a football. Mrs. Barber laughed. Good, because we have to carry some boxes of dishes tonight from the pantry to a closet. I don't want anything dropped. In the lunchroom on Monday, Tiki was the last to arrive at the table where several of the football players sat. But something was strange. When Tiki sat down, all the excited talking seemed to stop. Zip. There was an awkward silence. Tiki glanced at Rondé, who looked away. Slowly, the table emptied. See you at practice. At last, Tiki sat alone with Rondé. What were you guys talking about? Oh, Rondé eyed his half-eaten plate of food. Nothing. Come on, tell me. Rondé paused. Then in a quiet voice he said, Jason and some of the other guys think you should block more and carry the ball less. They think your fumbles are hurting our chances. Suddenly, Tiki's hot dog didn't taste so good. What'd you say? Well, I... Rondé gulped. What's that supposed to mean? Tiki, you're our best runner, but 
maybe the bell rang. Tiki took a last bite of his hot dog. The twins headed for the door. See you after school in the fort, Tiki called out as Rondé waved and raced up the stairs two steps at a time. The fort was in a vacant lot. Tiki and Rondé had built it using some old barrels and a few weathered wood planks. Surrounded by tall weeds, it was a perfect hiding place. When a car passed, it seemed far, far away. This afternoon, Rondé had brought their special book. It was really a scrapbook. A big photo of a football was pasted on the cover. Inside the football, Rondé and Tiki had each drawn his face with his number beneath it. The scrapbook itself was filled with football players' pictures, facts, and records. Tiki sat glumly, his mind still on his teammates' words, while his brother flipped the book's pages. Rondé's head bobbed up and down, searching for interesting facts. Question. Who's kicked the most career field goals? That's a snap, Tiki answered. George Blanda, the guy played forever. Rondé turned more pages. You think you're so cool? Try this. Walter Payton scored the most career rushing touchdowns, but who's second? Tiki thought for a moment. John Riggins. No, Franco Harris. You're wrong twice. Give up? Let's hear it. Jim Brown. 106 to Walter's 110. Suddenly, Rondé stopped. He held up a loose sheet containing a picture with a caption underneath it. Check this out. Some inventor is trying to make a tackling machine. He handed the picture to Tiki and went on. It's weird looking. The padded arms try to knock the ball away too. It's supposed to help practice against fumbling. Here's what it looks like. It's too complicated. It looks dumb. It won't work. Rondé studied the picture again, more intently. Hey, he looked at his brother. I got an idea, a better idea. Yo, you'll see, it's a surprise. We start tomorrow morning, you game? Tiki rolled his eyes. What was this all about? But he and Rondé always did stuff together. Okay, was all he said, whatever. The next morning, Tiki and Rondé rode their bicycles in the pale early light. Rondé uh, led the way. Turning into the park, he stopped at the edge of the golf course, got off his bike, and took two helmets and a football from a big bag attached to his handlebars. Here, he handed Tiki a helmet. Next, he placed two long sticks on the ground to mark off a kind of narrow runway. Now, he said, flipping Tiki the football. Try to get through a human tackling machine. Easy. Tiki caught the ball and walked backward. Then he spun around and darted forward, trying to race past Rondé while still staying between the sticks. Not so fast. Rondé tackled his brother and with a free hand slapped hard at the football. The ball, loosely clipped, popped out of Tiki's arms and dribbled off to one side. Again. This time, Tiki barreled straight ahead. Rondé ducked underneath and came up with two hands and ripped the football loose. Two nothing. It went on like this for a while. Sometimes Tiki and the ball got through, sometimes not. Yet, he was beginning to understand. One, two, three, four. Both boys were gasping for breath. Rondé was having a harder time loosening the ball. They heard a clock chime from a distant tower. Time to cut. Tomorrow morning? You're on, bro. The, do the days passed, hot Indian summer gave way to the cool days of fall, but some things stayed the same. Tiki and Rondé studied hard each night. Homework first, their mother always said, and they liked to read. Tiki especially liked books about space flights and astronauts. Rondé loved adventure stories. But the twins also kept up their secret morning practice club, and the Vikings started to win. They won their first game with a strong second half comeback. They won their second game in a romp. They won number three and then number four. The team was coming together. Tiki's game was improving too. In the fifth game, another Vikings victory, he was blindsided and dragged to the ground with a hard tackle, but he held on to the ball. Coach Mike took notice. Tiki no longer waved the ball in the air or tried to palm it like a loaf of bread or pushed it out in front as he raced downfield. Your brother's more than just a runner now, the coach remarked to Rondé. He's a ball carrier, our go-to guy. Yes, Rondé answered the coach, 
Tiki's on a roll. It's called confidence, Coach Mike replied while still watching the action on the field. And every good football player has it. Rodney glanced sideways at Tiki and gave a nod that only Tiki could see. Tiki felt stronger than ever. He felt like he was the man. After a while, the Secret Morning Practice Club had a new member. Paco was bent over, hands on knees, breathing hard. So that's it, he exclaimed. You guys do this extra stuff. When all along, I thought you were naturals. And now I find out that... Rondé broke in. Hey, let's talk. A few more turns and we're done. With two tacklers, it was much more difficult. Sometimes Tiki got away from Rondé, only to run into Paco, who held Tiki up as Rondé dove at the ball. Sometimes Paco and Rondé hit Tiki at the same time, both swatting the ball. But Tiki held on. I should call Paco meat and you grinder, Tiki joked to his brother. The boys sat on the grass. Saturday was another big game against the Knights. They don't just tackle you, Rondé said. They tackle the ball. You nervous, Teak? Paco asked. Like Coach says, keep the faith, and I will. Tiki nervous? Rondé answered Paco confidently. He shakes off any jitters by remembering what Coach said. One, two, three, four. The three friends laughed and clapped high fives. They hopped on their bikes and headed off to school. Game day, and what a game it was. Back and forth, up and down, seesaw. Just like that, the two teams battled through three quarters. First the Vikings, then the Knights. Then the Vikings, then the Knights. First quarter, 7-7. Seven to seven. Half time, 14-14. Third quarter, 21-21. Then... With five minutes left and the game still tied, the Vikings' offense raced onto the field. Coach Mike's word, words echoed in their ears. Hold on to the football. He had looked hard at Tiki when he said this. Eat up the clock and score the game winner. The Vikings huddled. Across the line of scrimmage, the Knights were shouting, Turnover! Turnover! But Tiki heard none of it. He only heard Jason calling his number. He only heard the beating of his own heart. He wanted the ball and he wasn't going to give it up. He wanted the ball, and he got it. Again and again. Tiki, with knees high, spun inside the left tackle. He slammed into and over a linebacker up the middle. He sprinted around a defensive end. He plowed straight ahead, behind Rondé, over Paco at right guard. Three yards, seven yards, five yards, eight yards, again and again. Everywhere he ran, he found a swarm of tacklers, Arms swung out, hands grabbed, fingers clawed at the football. But Tiki never let go. Somewhere, deep inside him, a voice said simply, This ball is mine. Mine. Yards piled up. Seconds became minutes. Tick, tock, tick, tock. The clock was winding down. In the huddle, Paco slapped Tiki on the shoulder pads and shouted, You're doing it, Velcro! As Rondé sighed, yeah! On the final play, three knights tackled Tiki, grabbing with all their strength at the ball, but no use. Tiki, head down and clasping the ball to his chest, drove ahead. He struggled free and dove, pushing hard. The game-ending horn sounded. Tiki, still clutching the football, looked from the pileup to see Rondé grinning. You can let go now, bro. You held out for us, and you scored! Game's over! Tiki bounced to his feet and tossed the ball to Rondé. The Vikings were shouting, jumping, and waving. Rondé laughed out loud. But now we can let it go, he called that out. He called out. Then he flung the football as high as he could into the air. Victory. The end. So I hope you enjoyed another Tiki and Rondé Barber book, and I will see you next time.